Over this past week, we've all seen a barrage of opinion pieces by cabinet members of the Wolf administration working to scare Pennsylvanians into voting no on Tuesday, May 18th, as if the wording was not enough of an effort to confuse voters into maintaining the status quo and not ensuring the checks and balances of co-equal branches of government between this body and the executive branch. But one of those op-eds jumped out at me, and that was the one penned by the Secretary of the Department of Transportation. Now, many of you who are on the Senate Appropriations Committee may have remembered my line of questioning directed to Secretary Gramian over a local project in my district when she was before the Senate Appropriations Committee on April 21st. York Countyans are painfully well aware of the Mount Rose Interchange project along Interstate 83 at Exit 18. And I asked Secretary Gramian point blank, when will this project be done? And she said it would be completed yesterday on May 11th. Guess what? It's not anywhere near completion. We have another several months yet to go. And I get it. We, we all have projects in our districts that are a few weeks behind, maybe a month or two behind, maybe even a year behind. Not this project. This project is three years behind schedule and millions of dollars over budget. And I'm sure that you saw my co-sponsor memo that went out yesterday to fix this problem moving forward to ensure that bad actors are not allowed to compete for contracts here in Pennsylvania. Let me put it to you this way. If any of us were doing, say, a, a kitchen or bathroom remodel, building a deck at our homes, we would do our due diligence and research any contractor that we are seeking to hire. If you Googled this contractor on the Mount Rose Interchange project, what you will find are stories of similar debacles in other states where the projects that they are in charge of are behind schedule and over budget. However, that's really not my point here today. My point is one of the Secretary's excuses that she used for this project's ongoing delay was due to the coronavirus pandemic. I don't remember any of us taking a vote to shut down the highway construction industry. Nope, it was the unilateral decision by the governor to shut down parts of our economy for the last 14 months. Make no mistake. My district has an interesting vantage point as it borders Maryland. Our neighbors south of the Mason-Dixon line actually saw their highway construction projects accelerated here in Pennsylvania, our projects came to a screeching halt for almost two months. And here are many angry and frustrated York Countyans who have to drive that stretch of Interstate 83 only to see yet another day of an incomplete construction project. There can be a lot of blame to go around as to why it's three years behind schedule. But the irony is not lost on me that PennDOT wants to put blame on the governor's unilateral shutdown for this delay when other states, including our neighbor to the south, could figure out a way to return workers to accelerate construction projects. And I find it really odd to read how the secretary of PennDOT would tell people to vote against restoring checks and balances when her own administration has caused greater delay and even admitted it to us at our hearing last month. Here we are, a day after a project was supposed to be completed, according to the head of this agency. More frustrated Yorktonians who had to read how maintaining a governor's unilateral power so he can do things like shut down the construction industry was a good thing, according to the Secretary of Transportation. The people of York County know this could not be any further from the truth. They will not be fooled. 
We have seen that collaboration instead of one person rule works. And I give a ton of credit to the work of the Legislative Vaccine Task Force, which ironically was started a mere four days after the legislature approved the proposed constitutional amendment. The first time we heard about collaboration was after this body sent a loud message to the administration that we would finally give voters the voice. The good senator from Lancaster County and the good senator from Philadelphia County, they have done a yeoman's job to get our vaccine rollout from feeling like we were trying to track down the hottest toy at Christmas to now where it's almost as easy to get as the annual flu shot. The numbers do not lie. We went from 49th in the nation and one of two states without an actual plan to distribute the vaccine when it was approved by the FDA to being in the top 10. Collaboration works. We've seen it. The legislature has only helped, not hindered, the emergency response. We have also seen that prolonged executive emergency powers without any input from the duly elected legislative branch do not work. If you want proof, just drive down Interstate 83 and look at Exit 18 and you'll see a prime example of that. York Countyans and every Pennsylvanian will have an opportunity to make their voices heard. They, and not the governor, will get to decide whether to require collaboration, which works, or maintain the status quo, which has cost us lives and livelihoods. The choice is that simple, and the choice is theirs on Tuesday, May 18th. Thank you, Mr. President.